Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Deck Tech on the Constructive Criticism YouTube channel. I'm Spencer, host of Constructive Criticism and Limited Time Only, two podcasts about getting better at Magic the Gathering. And today, we're going to talk about a new deck that might be possible with Aether Revolt and with uh, the recent bannings, and that is Green Red Ramp. So, one of the decks that did really well at the Pro Tour before um, Keladesh came out was Green Red Ramp. Uh, you know, two different versions, one of the, from the Japanese players and one from Team Pantheon with Reed Duke. And, you know, while it lost thing, you know, some of its, one of its most important cards in Nissa's Pilgrimage, the deck still has a lot of powerful things that it can be doing, and Worldbreaker is one of the, the most powerful things that you can be doing in Standard. So we're going to go over what the deck might look like and what you might want to try out uh, at your first week of FNM. So let's start with some of the ram spells. So we have two Hedron Archive. Hedron Archive is four mana uh, to ramp you to two. So it goes takes you from four to seven when you play your next land drop, which brings you right into the World Breaker range. We also have four Druid of the of the Cow. This card uh, is very important in the deck, and one of the reasons that I think this deck might be on the rise again, as it has three toughness. We have one Ishkana, one Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, one Uvenwald Captive. As something that uh, acts as another ramp spell to take us from two to four, as well as a, uh, a late game threat and even something that can help us ramp into our 10 mana Ulamog. We have one Uvenwald Hydra, three World Breaker, four Nestle of Vas of, uh, Vessel of Nascency, three Grapple with the Past, one Kozal, uh, sorry, three Kozal Extra Turn, three Shock. Shock is important because of the copycat combo. You definitely want to have something. First of all, you want to be able to deal with the acro decks uh, and help you bridge in this deck, as well as something to help you stop the copycat combo, as that could be something that's a real problem for you later in the format. We have one Chandra Flamecaller, two Chandra Torture Divides, another two, four uh, mana ramp spell that gets us to seven mana the next turn, and one Nissa Vital Force. This deck has 23 lands in the form of two Cinderglade, three Draenor Temple, two Evolving Wilds, eight Forests, four Game Trail, three Mountain and one Shrine of the Forsaken Gods. It has some sorceries in it as well, four Tormenting Voice and three Traverse the Uvenwald. As you can see here, the deck has a little bit of a sub-theme of Delirium for Traverse the Uvenwald, uh, you know, with Tormenting Voice, Vessel of Nascency, and Grapple with the Past. You can get your Ishkana to have uh, a, uh, a little bit of Delirium there, as well as your Traverses, so that they can act as early lands as well as late game World Breakers or Ulamogs. One of the huge things about this deck that we kind of hinted at earlier is that Druid of the Cowl does not die to Kozilek's extra turn. So that means that you can play your ramp spell and then you can wrath their board, giving you a lot of time to get to your big threat, which is something that's super helpful and something that we saw back in the day with different three toughness and four toughness creatures uh, in ramp decks. And we haven't had been able to do that in a long time. They haven't given us something since Sylvan Karyatid and that card didn't really... There was no Pyrocosm effects while that card was in standard that it would want to be played with. And Kozilek's Return is perfect for Druid of the Cow. Uh, you know, one of the other things that you'll notice in the deck is the synergy between Tormenting Voice and Draining Our Temple. We also have Vessel of Nascency and Grapple with the Past to get our Draining Our Temple into our graveyard to let it act as a ram spell at instant speed for us. That way we can leave up both Kozilek's Return and Shock and Draining Our Temple at the same time. This is a huge deal in your ramp deck. It lets you do a ton of different things at instant speed all while get, you know, progressing your game plan. One of the huge things about the deck also is term Tormenting Voice. Ramp decks typically have a hard time filtering through the decks and getting rid of the cards that they don't want. But you have a lot of recursion in the deck. Between World Breaker and Nyssa, you can get back some of the things that you discard with Tormenting Voice, as well as Dragon Air Temple. You can also discard excess lands and uh, just get yourself to some action later in the game. And Chandra Flamecaller does the same thing, actually. She actually just lets you filter through your deck, draw huge amounts of cards at once. That way you can get to the, your threats later in the game and discard your excess, your excess ramp spells and or lands to, to form more threats, which is pretty cool. Um, overall, the deck was held down by, yeah, you guessed it, Emrakul. Emrakul against Worldbreaker is actually really powerful a lot of the time because you can sacrifice multiple lands. Um, let's, let's say that you have, uh, you know, something like a Shrine of the uh, Forsaken Gods in play. This, at the same time as a Draenor Temple, you, act, you, you activate the Worldbreaker, okay? You sacrifice two lands. You can use, uh, probably not the Draenor Temple, but something else with, uh, with two other lands. So you sacrifice maybe two forests, something like that. Uh, with this on the stack, you can just keep doing it again and again. 
uh, for as many colorless sources as your opponent has out when you had Emrakul, which was a real problem. The other thing is Emrakul was just a better late game than most of what this deck will do. Whereas now with Emrakul gone, it could be that this deck could make a comeback. You know, Worldbreaker hitting lands and enchantments and artifacts is a huge deal in this format and could really push this deck back to where it wants to be. The other thing that you'll notice here is there's just a lot of one ofs in the deck as far as the, the threats go. And that's a huge thing that, you know, Traverse the Evenwall gets to do for the deck. Uh, you know, you also have resiliency with Nissa and different Planeswalker. Pa this Planeswalker package allows you to fight the game from a lot of different axes, and that's really important. Coastal Extreme being able to flash back with both Ulamog and Warbreaker is pretty big, getting rid of some of the bigger side of the threats that you might have to deal with still. Going into the sideboard, we have three Narwhal Dryad, two Green Warden of Marasa, two Tireless Tracker, three Weaver of Lightning, one Appetite for the Unnatural. One Kozil Extra Turn, two Tears of Valakut, and one Nissa Vital Force. This deck has a lot of things that it can do post board, you know, against aggressive decks and against some of the mid range decks. You can board into those Nair Ward Dryads. Against some of the big deck, the control decks, you can go into the Green Ward of Marasa, uh, Tireless Tracker, Nissa Package. Uh, and then against the aggro decks, you can just board in some Weaver of Lightnings, the other Kozil Extra Turn, uh, and, you know, have, have yourself a heyday with all those instant sorceries that we talked about in the main with your Weaver of Lightning, really putting a stop to those aggro decks. Overall, I think the deck is in a good position week one, something you might want to try out uh, going into your FNM, catch people unprepared as they haven't played against a ramp deck in a long time. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. You can also check out the podcast on constructivecriticism.com and uh, mtgcast.com. Uh, please subscribe. Let me know what you think, and we look forward to you guys seeing you guys all next week. Bye.